I want to remind you about um, if you're a youth, which looks like most of you are. Um, we're going to have a youth pool party today over at our house. And we'd love to have you there. It's going to be rain or shine. If you can't be in the pool because of lightning, well, we'll toss a couple in the pool because of lightning. But if you can't be in the pool because of lightning, we'll, 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 we'll stay inside and play games. We'd love to have you there. Um, right after Nick's service, about um, um, 10, excuse me, about 11.30 or so, we're going to have a potluck right over in this area. We'd love to have you be over there to be able to be part of that as well. So, um, and then I want to say one more thing. I want you to direct your eyes over here because there's a couple over here that started off on a new wondrous journey. These two got married this last couple of weeks. So, Those journeys are fun, aren't they? And so I want you to see a journey that our intrepid travelers in our movie this week, um, the, the, the um, Marigold Hotel movie, watch this journey that they take. journey we're talking about today. That journey 
where you have to go on an adventure that you're not quite sure you want to, but you have to. So Evelyn is one of the willing sorts. She wants to go on this journey. She just lost her husband, and she realized that she had, because of that relationship, been so tied into that relationship, she'd never discovered herself. And so this was her journey of discovery, journey to figure out who she could be. Muriel, Muriel, on the other hand, is one of those who got dragged into this. She is going there to get a hip replacement because that's the only place she can afford that hip replacement. She doesn't want to be there. She is, uh, I was going to say afraid, but that is not the word. She does not like those people. She is bigoted. They are the wrong sort. They are the wrong color. They are, she doesn't want to be there. But yet there she is because of her need. Douglas and Jean are there because they need a cheaper living arrangement. What they thought they were going to go to was, was not available to them, or not okay for them. But they're of different minds as they get to that space, and they're experiencing it in, in very different ways. They all went to India not knowing each other, but each one went there and entered into a journey. Does anyone want to talk about what happens when we get to the other end? They said somebody's going to meet us in Jaipur. How are we going to know you all right? Well, I'll call. They do have phones there. Or you can read my blog. Your what? On the internet. Just log in whenever you like and read my news. Well, I hope the first item will be announcing your return. I don't suppose they'll be paying for Jerry back. Look, before I go, I wonder if you could say one thing that's supportive. I've never done anything like this in the whole of my life. You've never done anything at all with that, Dad. I don't think you'll be able to cope. Well, let's just find out, shall we? Well, let's just find out, shall we? That's the nature of what you have to do to go on, a, on one of these adventures, is you have to say, let's just find out what comes of it. And much of our hearts tell us not to. Much of our good sense tells us, wait, think about this again. But like Evelyn, sometimes we just need to jump into that tuk tuk and take the journey. That we don't know where it leads, we don't know what will happen there, but we need to step into it. Because the dream in front of us, that journey in front of us can sometimes be hidden by all of that past, and even by all of that present that keeps us away from taking that next step by, by allowing ourselves to step into it. Who we have been gets in the way of who we need to be in that moment and who it is calling us forward to become. And we have to believe enough in ourselves that we don't quite hear even that wondrous person who we call our son, who's telling us, you know you don't want to go. We have to step off into that journey, that new place. One of the characters in this, in this movie has been there before. His name is Graham. And um, so he kind of takes on the leadership role. And as they get off those tuk-tuks, uh, well, as they get off the plane, first of all, he looks at them and says, the first rule in India, as they looked at that bus that's always that's full of people already, the first rule in India, there's always room. <laughs> so jump on, even though it looks like there's not. My friend Mike took a this journey. I know him down in Yuma, and he, in fact, I got to do his marriage to Shirley. It was, it, it was a wondrous time. Um, and I didn't know Shirley because she did very well because shortly after, they took off on the journey to go to Ecuador because that's what they could afford. That was the journey they wanted to do. And they, he would write me all these stories about what's going on, what they were learning, and how they were growing. But today he's on a new journey because Shirley passed away. And he's saying, okay, well, where, what, where is this taking me? What can this do? You see, life continually pulls us into new journeys, and we're not sure we want to go on most of them. Muriel definitely didn't want to go on this journey. She's that one who looked at those brown people and 
didn't want to be near them, didn't want to go into that space, but she needed a hip replacement. She needed to be there. And there was a young girl who, because she was in a wheelchair, would bring Muriel the food. Her name is Anoki. And um, Anoki got ignored, but not quite. Watch what happens. <laughs> You will insult her very deeply if you do not. We forget, we get blinded by 
all the things that we think we already know. And we read things through our past lens, through something that we think is there, which often isn't. And we have to be the opposite. We have to be like the mom who, in the midst of the preparation for the meal for everyone, who's doing something really important, stops in order to take care of that little scraped knee. Stops because being with that child in that moment is more important. Even though the stuff may burn, even though it's really not to hurt, she knows that being there in that moment is important. And very often, we don't recognize that. Jean, for sure, doesn't recognize it. She doesn't want to be in India. She has lots of reasons why that's the wrong choice, and she is living out of those reasons. And because of that, she sees things in ways, she looks at that space in ways that make it so she sees something very different from her husband. Douglas sees opportunities. Jean sees only closed doors. <laughs> presence 
of someone else. We saw Han played out over Twitter this week. As our president said, no. But you saw the solution to Han played out as the military, who had had every reason to say no to these people in the past. Everyone had given them all kinds of permission, but they say, but we know these people and chose to say we want them. We want to continue with them in community. Is that an amazing thing that happened? An ally where we could have just seen barriers, where they could have just seen barriers. And so they provide a community for each other to discover what can be, just like in the movie, where these seven come together and choose to somehow discover community. You know, last week I, I, I did that story about that contemporary song from the 1960s. And someone thought I wasn't quite being modern enough. And so that much younger soul, thank you, Judy, <laughs> said, you might want to use a, more, a younger song. And so he, she gave me an example. Listen to these words from from James Le Lechman, a, a singer from uh, Norway. But in a, mal in a world of mouths, I want to be an ear. If there's a purpose to all this, then that's why God put me here. Don't we on a regular basis try to shout our own truth when maybe that other person needs to be heard in that moment? Or maybe that other person needs me to listen Last Sunday night, I sat right over there with a man who came early to that, that concert. And it's an amazing concert. If you didn't come, you missed out. It was, it, was, it was wonderful. I sat over there with a man who's from, shall I say, a more conservative, traditional church than this one. But one who, who would only come to, to um, Tucson a few years ago and so didn't quite know your reputation. <laughs> so he sat there with me and saw a pastor, and so he began to unload his soul. Yeah, I hate the way. Maybe you've seen that kind of person. And talked about all those things that, that he's against, that I'm for. I said, do I correct him? In that moment, I sat there and listened and said, maybe what he needs is to unload the harm from his soul. Maybe in that moment, what he needs is an ear that hears him and allows him to recover from all of that. But it's hard to provide that, isn't it? Gene has a hard time. All the rest of the community somehow steps into this new space in order to find ways to heal from their harm, but Gene isn't quite ready to let go because all of that still stands. And she knows all the barriers that are there But it's that, it's that discovery of relationship that allows us to get past that. And Gene isn't quite able to do that. Evelyn, in one of her blogs, says that what you have to do is if you're going against the wave, there's two things you can do. You can stand there and let it rush you over or you can dive into it. And that diving into it is what will ultimately allow you to stand. Because if you just try to force yourself against it, you will always get pulled over. I learned a new word this week. It's a mashup word. It's moiv. How many have heard of that word? It means to love and live all at once. To live your life in such a way that in every single moment, that living plays out in that loving, and that loving plays out in that living. And that every moment you are so full of love and life that it flows out together. Love depends upon the capacity to reach beneath the surface and see what's truly 
there. And to love that person in spite of whatever surface thing they're giving to you. To see the harm that they're dealing with and somehow speak to them in such a way that they are able to let go of that harm and listen to them as they help you to let go of your own harm. Love, says our contemporary reading from the next group service, love becomes a power when it is capable of evoking that seed of love and drawing it forth from its hiding place. In the, in the book Kissing Fish, Roger Wolseley quotes a young girl, a Gen Xer, who says this, do you know, do you understand that you represent God to me? Do you know, do you understand that when you treat me with gentleness, it raises the question in my mind that maybe God is gentle too? Maybe God isn't someone who laughs when I hurt. Do you understand, excuse me, do you know, do you understand that when you listen to my questions and you don't laugh, I think, what if God is interested in me? Also, do you know, do you understand that when I hear you talk about arguments and conflicts and, and, and scars from your past, I think maybe I am just a regular person instead of the bad, no good little girl who deser deserves abuse. If you care, I think maybe God cares. And then there's this flame of hope that burns inside me. And for a while, I am afraid to breathe because it might go out. Do you know, do you understand that your words are God's words, your face, God's face, to someone like me? Please be who you say you are. Please, God, don't let this be another trick. But please, let this be real. Please, do you know, do you understand that you represent God to me? Graham, the one who knows India, is sitting on a bus next to Evelyn. And Evelyn asks him a question. And he gives an amazing answer. How long since you've been here? Forty years. Oh, it's as long as I was married. My husband died recently. I'm sorry. Do you think we'll be all right? God, don't ask me. I'm more scared than you are. No. It's going to be extraordinary. See that? We want to say no. But then we have to stop and say, wait. The journey ahead is extraordinary. But we have to give ourselves into each other. We have to allow that other person to move into our world and become part of the community that both draws harm out of us and who gives us their harm. Go and make this life extraordinary. Go and, and bring people to space where they will learn about themselves and grow into who they can be. Go and make this world extraordinary. Amen? Amen? Let's stand and sing, Ragged Dan. Oh, baby. That's my excuse.